Hey everyone, welcome back. This is a very detailed entertainment center I got from my neighbor. Today's video, we're going to have to paint it and do decorative wax. I am trying out a new sander. It is the Surf Prep Sander. I'll put a link down below. This sander is known for having a foam pad in between the sander and the sandpaper, so it goes nicely over detail and can get into all the grooves. Overall, I'm very impressed with this sander. After sanding, I'm using Rust-Oleum's cleaner and degreaser. Spray a generous amount, wipe it down with a paper towel to remove any dirt, residue, dust left over from sanding. Originally I was going to leave the inside of this piece wooden so I spent some time taping it off. I made a mistake with the priming so I didn't really need to do this at all. Sometimes we have an idea of how we want the piece to look in our head and the piece just takes us a different direction. If this has ever happened to you, go ahead and hit the like so I know I'm not the only one out there. I've seen a lot of other YouTube painters try out the Zinsser Shellac Base Primer, so I decided to give it a try. Originally, when I started to spray it, I noticed a lot came out of the can, so I was concerned about the finish drying nice and smooth. After I let it set overnight, though, I was very happy with the primer and the finish. It was nice and smooth. So this is where I mess up with the primer. I was using a box to block off the inside that did not work very well. I got primer all over the inside. So I decided to go ahead and abandon that idea and paint the inside and the outside of this piece. Since I decided to paint the inside as well, more prep work needed to be done. I grabbed my 120 grit sanding sponge to sand the inside. After a few minutes of sanding, I decided that it would be easier to sand and paint this piece if I went ahead and disassembled it. Sometimes when cleaning and taking apart dressers, I find random things inside. Here I found a bag of Sharpies. I use Sharpies a lot, so that was definitely a score. I let the shellac base primer set overnight, so I was ready to sand. I'm using a 220 grit sanding sponge just to make sure I have a smooth surface before painting. After sanding, I dust everything off with a lint-free clean cloth. Trying another new product, this is Chippy Barnes Amulet Paint in the French Lane. I have never used this before. I can say my original thought is that the color choices are amazing and beautiful. I really love this French Lane color. It's a true vintage duck egg color. The coverage is fantastic. Traditional chalk paints have chalk and clay fillers versus the amulet paint which has ceramic microspheres in it that allow for a self-leveling effect. Also, the amulet paint does not require a top coat and it has a matte finish. I was not 100% happy with the amount of brush strokes that were left after painting, but that's okay. We are going to add the decorative wax. So the time that I'm finished with this piece, you can't see any of the brush strokes. 
Overall, I'm very happy with this paint. I will use it again and definitely try some of the other various colors. I'll put a link down below if you would like to try this paint out for yourself. If you like seeing reviews on new products and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and do that now. this to dry for two hours and then of course my phone decides that it wants to die so I'm showing you one little area here the next step I take a 400 grit sandpaper dust off the piece and then paint it with a second coat My phone is fully charged, so I'm back to showing the full process. This paint, like I said before, is ama amazing, has great coverage. I just dip my paintbrush into the can and then wipe the backside off so I don't get too much paint on my brush. And then you can see the great coverage here as I paint the cabinet doors. Drying time is two to four hours for this piece, but I let it set overnight and then use my 400 grit sandpaper to lightly go over the piece just to make sure I have a nice smooth surface. Wipe it off with a clean lint-free rag to remove any dust residue before putting on a wax. I want to take a second and show off my bees, knees, knee pads, link down below. For our top coat, I'm using Bear's Decorative Wax in the clear finish. Before you can use the dark antiquing wax, you have to add a layer of clear wax on top of matte finish paints. This is a light color paint, so I'm using a light color piece of t-shirt just to wipe the piece over smoothly. I 
allow the clear wax to dry for about 15 minutes and then grab a clean lint-free cloth to buff it. I want the dark wax to be fluid and flow evenly through the piece, so I go ahead and assemble it back together first. Supplies needed for antiquing, a cheap arts and craft brush, decorative wax in clear and a dark wax or antique wax, very fine steel wool. I take one piece, cut it up into three sections, and then you'll need a couple pieces of clean t-shirt already cut up. All right, here we go. Don't be scared to do this part. I'm gonna walk you through it. Pick a section to start with. I pick the drawer, put some dark wax on your brush, and then smooth it over the entire section. You wanna work in small sections so the dark wax doesn't dry up on you before you can get the full look that you want. You'll notice here that I'll add a thicker amount around the edges of the drawer and then a thinner amount in the middle of the drawer, but darker around the handle. Just think of the areas that a worn piece normally gets chipped and scratched and dirt built in. All right, after you have the wax applied to your area, grab a piece of the steel wool and you're going to wipe it over the dark wax. You can see this gives it more of a blended effect. Now don't press very hard here because the steel wool will remove the wax and your paint off if you press too hard. So you're just wiping it over the piece, removing some of the dark wax that you put on, giving it more of a blended look. the last step here to give it the look I want and really bring it all together grab your clear wax the t-shirt piece with some clear wax on it and then just gently wipe over the piece removing a little bit more of the dark wax to blend it even more this is very much of a put it on take it off take it off a little bit more process if you take off a little bit too much of the dark wax no worries just grab your dark wax brush put it back on and then blend it again you can go back and forth through this process as much as you want to getting whatever level of worn look you desire i originally saw this dark wax application method on a christina muscari i'm not sure that's how you say her name she has a youtube channel as well i've used this process many times throughout the years and it has worked very well for me so i'll make sure to put a link to her youtube channel down below
When I'm learning a new artistic technique, I like to be able to see more than just the front of a piece when I'm watching a YouTube video, so I decided to go ahead and show you the sides as well. I apply the dark wax around the corners, like I did on the drawer, darker around the corners. All right, and then for this big section in the middle, I'm gonna go up and down and then go sideways crisscross. That way it doesn't really have a streaking effect, it's more of a blended effect all over. I do the same process on the other side and the top as well. After I'm happy with the antique look I achieved over the entire piece, I let it set for a couple hours and then my favorite part, buff it. Let's take a look at our before again. And our after. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you'd like to see more of my tutorials, make sure to go ahead and hit that bell. And until next time.